new open source large language model called Bloom with 175 billion parameters. An international collaboration of academic volunteers is breaking into the large language model field with a new 175 billion parameter model as part of an open science initiative. Trained with USD 7 million worth of publicly funded computing time, the Bloom language model will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with similar models from tech giants such as Google and OpenAI. Aside from its collaborative roots and the decision to open source the project, Bloom is also the first model of this scale to be multilingual and will be made available for research uses. Large language models are ML algorithms that can recognize, predict, and generate human languages by drawing on the enormous text-based data sets used to train them. They can respond to questions, write essays, or generate computer code with limited instructions. Indeed, GitHub Copilot, which helps software developers write code, is powered by Codex, itself repurposed from GPT-3. Due to the massive amount of computing required to train such models, large language models to date are built by large tech firms with strong financial backing. Behind the scenes, however, they are helmed by relatively small teams who turn to easily available resources such as online repositories or popular sites such as Reddit for the data to train their models. Bloom is the work of hundreds of researchers consisting mostly of academics such as ethicists, legal scholars, and philosophers. Data sources were identified through a series of workshops with a much broader base of collaborators, including community groups around the world. It is understood that the researchers handpicked nearly two-thirds of the 341 billion word data set from some 500 sources. This was topped off with a multilingual web crawl filtered for quality. Everything happens completely in the open, anyone can participate, and all research artifacts are shared with the entire research community. Bloom is designed as an interdisciplinary research workshop, gathering researchers, academic, industrial, and independent. With a diversity of research interests, including AI, natural language processing, social science, legal, ethics, and public policy, she said. Bloom is currently trained on Genes A, a French government-funded supercomputer installed at IDRIS, the National Computing Center for the French National Center for Scientific Research, CNRS. Access to 384 NVIDIA A100 GPU with 80 GB of memory each has been allocated for Bloom for several months offering approximately 1.2 million GPU hours. For comparison, Thailand's National Science and Technology Development Agency's NSDDA new supercomputer will be powered by 704 NVIDIA A100 Tensor Core GPU. When fully trained, Bloom will have 107 to 6 billion parameters and would have consumed more than 350 billion words from four to six different languages. Already, some have called Bloom the most important AI model of the decade, ahead of Google's 540 billion parameter pathways language model or the trailblazing GPT-3. With Bloom, state-of-the-art AI is no longer reserved for big corporations with big pockets, argues AI analyst Alberto Romero in a contributed opinion piece. Romero noted that the funding and building of an open large language model have created intense pressure on the various tech giants to open source their models. Seen from this perspective, Bloom is the spearhead of an impending wave of change in the AI field, he says. While the groundwork was put in place last year, the actual training of Bloom started in April. Just a month later, in May, Meta AI announced that it will give away its massive new language model OPT as part of its effort to democratize AI. For now, the fully trained Bloom model will be made available for download, though running it will require extremely powerful hardware. In addition, Hugging Face has also committed to releasing a web application to query Bloom online. As the code and data set behind the Bloom model are open, it is hoped that researchers can study it to help improve future iterations. An AI made from plasma learns to play tic-tac-toe using varying and controllable mixtures of gases in a major step forward. The concept is based on creating a data processing unit from a network of chemical reactions taking place within an isolated chemical system, such as a plasma. The scientists need to find a set of chemical parameters for the system, such as pressure or temperature, so that the system can spit out proper information in real time according to a dynamic input, making the system a programmable analog computer that functions on a molecular level and can process complicated information in nanoseconds. The chemical parameter sets are thus the software in such an analog computer to determine the chemical reactions. 
in other words, the thinking process in the computer. However, writing the program for it is quite different from coding a conventional computer. The scientists consider the map of chemical reactions in the system, namely the chemical pathway network, as an artificial neural network. The chemical parameters are the weights of the network, and the concentrations of species are the neuron values. Using modern machine learning techniques, the hardware can be trained, programmed, for specific missions. The training purpose is to find the chemical parameters set for the mission. Once it is acquired, the programming is completed. When using the system after training, the users can switch the chemical parameters set among different missions, just like running different software on a computer. To demonstrate this, Lai and Cater taught a plasma to play tic-tac-toe. But how can a plasma actually see the board to play the game? Lai and Cater achieved this by feeding the plasma with a gas mixture. The 3x3 board of the game was set up using nine different gases, each representing one of the game's nine tiles. The board status can thus be represented by the mixing ratio of these gases. A lower ratio of a type of gas means a plasma's marker at that tile, while a higher ratio means an opponent's marker. Once the plasma received such a gas mixture, the chemical reactions in the plasma start working, making excited atoms and molecules. These excited species will output light signals representing the plasma's next move. Therefore, a different board status means different mixing ratios of these gases, which lead to a series of different chemical reactions in the plasma. The plasma will thus output a different next move. This is the plasma thinking using its chemical pathway network. The light signals will be translated to update the board status so that the opponent, either a human or a computer player, such as the random move player used for training and testing, can play along. Next, after the opponent makes a move, the gas mixture with the new mixing ratios representing the new board status will flow into the plasma for its consideration. The training is achieved by trying the chemical parameters with small modifications. A modification leading to a lower score will be discarded and the parameters will be set back. However, a set of modified parameters that can make the plasma play better will be recorded and the next modification, generation, will be based on it. This is a typical evolutionary algorithm used in the machine learning world. Through training, the plasma eventually achieved a high winning rate against the random move player, indicating that the plasma does not play randomly but with logic and develops its own strategies. This is how the plasma shows us a chemical-based AI, said Lin. During the training, Lin and Cater also found that the plasma became more and more aggressive and tried to win games in fewer moves. However, they didn't design any scoring system to define that winning a game sooner is better for the plasma during its training. The plasma concluded that missing a winning move would introduce more uncertainty into the game, said Lin. Therefore, it learned not to miss any chance of winning and starts to win a game sooner. The plasma even started to demonstrate the fork move, which makes two winning positions available while the opponent can only block one of them. It was interesting to see a material concluding that the best defense is a good offense all by itself. These are common behaviors of an AI learning a game, but now materials with complex chemistry can also show such behaviors. Processing information in this way consumes less power compared to modern digital computers where electric charges are moved around circuits, creating and transferring digital signals. Using a digital computer is an indirect way of processing data compared with a chemical system. The intelligence level of a chemical reaction network can also be controlled by manipulating the complexity of the system. This is similar to the theory of artificial neural networks, where more neurons with more connections mean a stronger information processing capability. Chemistry-based AI has multiple advantages. First, unlike other intelligent materials, such as soft or adaptive materials that display only basic logic and memory, the chemistry-based approach gains a higher intelligence level. Playing a board game is not possible for other intelligent materials, said Lin. The intelligence level of a chemical reaction network can also be controlled by manipulating the complexity of the system. This is similar to the theory of artificial neural networks, where more neurons with more connections mean a stronger information processing capability. For the chemical system, one can simply multiply the reactors to increase the complexity of the chemical system, said Cater. Of course, the system can also be used as a data processor without high-level intelligence, such as a modern CPU in a personal computer.
This theory can be applied to any materials with chemical behaviors that are complicated enough to make them suitable. Researchers want to combine self-organization of molecules with chemical-based AI, which could be a way, for example, to use any surface as a computer screen, available whenever people might need one. The challenge is to control the self-organization of molecules with the chemical-based AI so we can harness it wherever and whenever. And that's the roundup of the AI news for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and enable the notification bell for the latest news in artificial intelligence, robotics, and brain-computer interface news, and thanks for watching.